Thank you for staying tuned with After the Whistle. I'm your host, Asher Daniel, along with Edmund Aktibu. We do apologize for the technical difficulties. We are restarting the program for the ones who, are, who got cut off a little bit. So we're going to go with the NFL and discuss um, Jarvis Landry. Um, he became a free agent, who is becoming a free agent with the NFL uh, this offseason. The Miami Dolphins offered him a, uh, a franchise tag that he is signing next week, but then he will be traded. Um, so the team that's looking forward to, it's surprising me that I posted on this page last week was the Chicago Bears. Okay, it, it was a move that I'm, I'm kind of surprised that what they're doing is they're offering Jordan Howard and a draft pick for Javarius Landry, the Miami Dolphins, yeah. and a draft pick coming back. You know, this is something I'm kind of surprised with the Chicago Bears. You know, you, you have a great running back place in hand, okay, but then you have... You know, the Miami Dolphins offering this, situ you know, offering this wide receiver. Why would the Chicago Bears even consider this when you have a legitimate running back who produced for the past two years at no in number one status? You know, Tariq Cohen is his backup. There there's no one else. Why would the Chicago Bears even attempt, you know, to, to, to want something like this when they can go on free agency and find a great receiver, like I would mentioned, Martavius Bryant, right. even though he, he is a, a receiver that, may have some off-field issues, even on-field issues, by not starting enough. But that's the type of receiver you want, who, who's aggressive and wants the ball. Devereux Landry he hasn't really done much. I mean, he's a great receiver, but in Miami, he hasn't proven himself. And you're going to come to a, a climate change in Chicago, you know, for Miami. I don't, I don't like that uh, situation. I, I don't like that if they pursue this trade, even though now Baltimore is in the ballgame of getting this receiver. But to offer him Jordan Howard, or, or one of the great running backs, where are they? What are they thinking? It's the Chicago Bears. I love you and I hate you. However, sixteen point two million for Jarvis Landry. I wouldn't give fifty cents for this guy. And you want to get rid of Howard for this guy? The guy had five touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Five, five. This guy's not proven. He's wishy-washy no, at best. No. I would consider this guy an average wide receiver in the NFL. And you want to give up? Howard, who I consider to be right now maybe a top five running back in the NFL, and you want to get rid of him? That, that's, that's absurd. It is absurd. It, I'm going to tell you what my dad says. If you listen to me, Bears, you will go forward. Listen to me, and you will go forward, I promise you. Don't trade, and they're going to give up a spot? The number? No. Mm -hmm. No, this is, no, no way. So, this guy is average at best, at best. At best. And the franchise tag that they're discussing is $16.2 million for Landry. That $16.2 million could be used for someone else. I mean, you're getting rid of, uh, of Jordan Howard and they're taking a $16.2 million in a contract for, for Javarius Landry. I mean, seriously, what has he done in Miami? Nothing, nothing, nothing. You know, nothing. I mean, come on. Nope. So, I mean, it, it's, it, it's still considered a rumor right now, but, you know, the, every step the Bears were making this offseason was, was in the right direction. Don't mess this one up. You have great receivers in the free agency. You have a, you have a great area right now. Actually, what is it? What are they drafting? Seventh or eighth? I think they're drafting eighth or ninth. Somewhere. Like, eighth, I believe, eighth, eighth, eighth pick. You can pick up a wonderful it, – it's a deep pool of receivers, okay? Yeah. You can go after this year. Bears have eight. San Francisco de Gale have nine. And Oakland Raiders have ten. And that was because of the coin flip? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean. We can get a great player with the eighth pick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, they can. They absolutely can. I mean, there's other ways around it. 
You can pick up that kid from, from Alabama. He's a great whiteout. Mm -hmm. They can pick him up very cheap. Balash. Pick him up. Why not? Absolutely. 16.2 million for Landry? I wouldn't give 50 cents. <laughs> so no we're sticking with the NFL, and we're going to go ahead and discuss Kirk Cousins. Uh huh. So Kirk Cousins seems like to be the, the main topic because he is a quarterback, and this only kind of, you know, the top free, free agency this year looks like they're focusing on him. Kirk Cousins has signed two franchise tags that they did with Washington. So it doesn't look like he's looking for money right now per se, but they're looking for a shorter-term contract. That's what these teams right now are, are looking to put together. It's almost like uh, a hush-hush quiet with, with the teams. It used to be a team chase for Kirk Cousins, which is down to four. Okay, Jacksonville is out of the ballpark. They're not in it anymore, which I'm surprised. You know, They signed Blake Bortles. And they, you know, he did great. I don't want to say he did great. He did very good against Pittsburgh. Okay, don't get me wrong. He did wonderful. But this is a quarterback. In the offseason, they didn't even know that he was going to play. Okay? They didn't even know if he was going to play. The defense carried Jacksonville. Absolutely. 100%. Not alone with Leonard, Leonard Fournette, who is a wonderful, great running back. If he stays healthy. If he stays healthy. Now, granted, what happens next year? It might not be their, their season. They might get turnovers, or they might lose players. They might get injured. You know, that's why you have to do what you can to get the best product out there. Kirk Cousins was probably one of the best quarterbacks they could have gotten. Uh, and Kirk Cousins himself, you know, they could have, he could have gone to Florida and saved money off, off the taxes because, you know, there's no state tax there. So he could have gotten a great contract. So here are the teams that are looking for Kirk Cousins. You've got the Minnesota Vikings, Edmund. You've got Denver Broncos, the New York Jets, and the Arizona Cardinals. Mm -hmm. The New York Jets, I don't see them fitting this. I mean, they, they actually, for their situation, they have the most um, cap room to get this quarterback. But as Kirk Cousins, do you really want to go to New York when you just realize in Washington how many years they spent there, you couldn't win it? If you want to win a Super Bowl, you're not going to go to New York unless you really want that money. On a short term... You know, he says he doesn't care. Max it out. They're gonna, it's going to be heavy load in the front with the money that he's asking for. Shorter term, but front-heavy contract. Yeah. The best bet right now would be the Minnesota Vikings, in my opinion. I, I don't know what Which you're I gonna, think is a mistake, by the way. What you think is a mistake. But the Minnesota Vikings have already said they're powering away with Case Keenum and Teddy Bridgewater. They're keeping their backup, or not their backup, uh, Brett Sam Bradford, who they're probably going to bring in as a backup on a very uh, small contract, if he even opts to do that. Uh, he's a journeyman, so I don't see them not doing that. He'll probably sign it and wants to win a Super Bowl. You bring Case Keenum at whatever contract he wants, they have the money. Yeah. To me, it's the smartest bet. They were right at the doorstep of going to the Super Bowl. The doorstep? The doorstep, and then they lost to the I Philadelphia like Eagles. Because of why? A phenomenal defense all 60 seasons. When it came into the playoffs, they did great against the Saints, but they lost to the Philadelphia Eagles. When all bets were on Minnesota winning it. They lost. They laid a goose egg. Okay. Big goose egg. Edmund, I'm I'm saying Minnesota at this point. Even actually, I don't want to say even Denver probably has a chance, but in Denver they have an unproven coach. Okay. Uh, it's not stable. It's like playing in Washington again. Minnesota is the team to be for K, for uh, uh, Kirk Cousins. I know you don't like that. What's no, your take? I don't like it. Look, in the NFL you need consistency. You don't want to have a player come in from Washington, new offensive coordinator, new, new game plan, new scheme. What good is it? Mm -hmm. Look, you've got to give this guy Casey Keenum a chance. The guy took your team to 13-3. and 13-3. and three. When will those come the Bears or even Tampa Bay won 13 games? You have to throw in. Well, i got to throw it you in. You have to win. Skinny out to skinny okay, out to. The Bucs was in 2003 when they won the Super Bowl. Yee! Bears, I think, was 2001 Ooh. under uh, Dick Jaron. Uh, I'm not even a Bears fan of Dick Jaron. Anyway, look. The guy won 13 games. Minnesota has a phenomenal defense, yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. The best. You, you keep the player. He won 13 games. Give him the opportunity. Look, that game against New Orleans where he threw the last second touchdown, they should have lost. But against the Eagles, look, their defense let them down that game. But Minnesota was right there in it. They could have been the NFC champions. You give Casey Keenum another chance because he earned that right. He won your football team 13 games. Mm -hmm. 13 out of 16 is very good in the NFL. It's very hard to win in the NFL every week, day in and day out. Look. 
you give the guy another opportunity, you keep the unit cohesion, you keep the consistency, and you give the guy another opportunity because, quite frankly, he earned it. He really did. Why bring in Cousins? Keep Cousins where he's at, which you say is not going to happen. Go to Denver. Go to Denver. I, I could see him going to Denver. If he goes to Denver, I, mean, I believe he's going to end up like playing like Washington. You know, Demarius Thomas is up there in age. You have an unproven coach, a defense that's still good at, to a point, okay? But, uh, I mean, he got C.J. Anderson. I, I mean, I can see what you – it's valid. It really is valid. But yeah. I believe Minnesota overall is probably a few steps closer to winning the Super Bowl than Denver. Oh, a uh, few steps. You know, but a so, lot. But yeah. why would you want to choose Denver over Minnesota? Why? Yes. I'm looking at it as a Minnesota standpoint where it makes no sense to bring in Kirk Cousins. Because of Case Keenum. I, I, I see what you're saying. And in a way, you're right. You, could be, you, could be, you have a point because that money that might, he might be asking for or they want to throw to him could be used, utilized elsewhere where they could probably benefit more. Like a tight end. Kyle Rudolph is a wonderful tight end, but he's not your prototypical tight end that every team has. You're six foot five, um, like Gronkowski is. You know, that's yeah, what you but go Gronkowski, for. he's injury prone. I'm sorry. He's hurt every other week. He's not consistent. You don't know what's going to happen. He's a great, he's the best tight end when he's playing, if you can keep him on the field. Mm -hmm. But half the time, he's injured. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't need a player like that. I want someone who's going to be in the fight 16 games and go to the playoffs and play every game. Well, I don't want someone who's going to play three games, out a season and a half, come back, Play to Menchi Nesha. Well, Gronkowski is... Jumbi get out of they're here. They're not utilizing Gronkowski how it should be. First of all, they're going, going, they're going to Gronkowski every other play. That's why he's injured. Well, that's Belichick. You know, he's that, the greatest that, that's coach the ever. That's, well, he, in my opinion, he is. The best. He is. The best. So let's go on um, and touch base with the Chicago Cubs. Hello! The Chicago Cubs. Nora, da, Nora! Give you fire. Okay? Fire! That is fire. New Cubs. The I Chicago mean, Cubs right now in the Cactus League are 6-2. and two. They are on fire. Okay, fire. I believe in uh, the way they're looking at it this year is they really disappointed themselves last year with the way they played offensively and their pitching. I uh, blame Ronnie DeCaleta because he didn't go to enough games. <laughs> Seriously. When he would go all the time, they were winning. He stopped going to all the games. They started losing. Ronnie, I blame you. I blame Ashishiba, but we're not going to go there. Uh, Khan uh, Bart, Bart, Bartman, Bartman you know, is my Kusita. situation. Right, Bartman. Yeah, but uh, Ronnie DiCaleta, I blame you. <laughs> you didn't go to enough games. When Ronnie was going, he was there. He was like Good Luck Chuck. Yeah. Remember seeing the movie Good Luck Absolutely Chuck? Absolutely. Yeah, good Ronnie's luck. the Good Luck Chuck. So the Chicago Cubs are looking at it this way. Okay, they are on fire. They're hitting home runs. We're going to show I, you uh, some. We're going to show you some footage momentarily. But the guy that is astounding, and I honestly had to do a double take for me to see that who it was, it's Schwarber. He's lost so much weight, uh, he looks phenomenal on the field. He's moving his brother, by the way. Yes, he is. Yep. Yes, he is. I've Guaranteed. met him a time. I play football with him, too. Yeah. Is he any good? Football? He's not bad. Okay. Um, he's lost a lot of weight. He's training like his life, he's training like it's, it's his last day on earth, okay? He's running routes. He, he, he's trying to prove it to himself that he belongs on the field. Last year, okay, John Madden sent them down, uh, and I think it touched him. It hurt him, and he realized himself, you know, I got to get better. I got to get in shape in order for me to prove myself before I get shipped out, you know. And that could have happened this year, but it looks like he made a promise to himself and the Chicago Cubs. So before we continue further with, with the Chicago Cubs, let's show some highlights of the spring training of what they're looking like this year. On fire. Nuda, nuda.
So we saw some of the highlights of the Cubs this year. Again, they're 6-2. and two. They look like they're poised to make another run. They signed you, Darvish. You know, Hello. With Jake Arrieta, um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with him, with uh, Scott Boris. You know, he's obviously looking for a max contract. You know, with him, he, he should have stayed. I mean, I know what he's looking for with the Cubs. Probably came in negotiations. He didn't want to be with the Cubs. He didn't want to take a hometown discount. That's unfortunate. You know, if he just stayed one more year with the Cubs, win another championship, and then look for that max contract, you would have probably gotten it. But, you know, we'll see from there what's going to happen. So tell me, in your mind, who surprised you this year with the Cubs? Who are you looking at as, as probably the one who's going to, aside from, from uh, Schwarber, who in your eyes is going to turn it around this year? Someone who, ha who hasn't done it last year, who are you looking like is going to turn it around this year? I'm hoping Hayward, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, on defense, he's an asset, phenomenal player. But the last two seasons that we've had him, his hitting hasn't just been where it needs to be at. Look, for the amount of money that he's getting paid. $180 million. For you that don't know. $180 million to bring him from St. Louis, Edmund. Yeah. He should be hitting $280, $285. Not 230, 240. It disappoints me. Yes, his defense is phenomenal. He's an asset in the outfield. He, he is the clubhouse leader when it comes to leadership and being a veteran player. Veteran, that's something Rafid always says. Veteran. Who says that? Martin, that's Rafid. We always oh. fight. I know we're going off track, but veteran. It's okay. Veteran bowling alley. Veteran, veteran is. This. Anyway, they'll like walk. Guaranteed. Like. They'll, yeah, they'll giggle later. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we, we, we just. I'm hoping it's him. But the guy who always, like, makes me want to pull my hair out is Javi Baez. I love the guy. Javi Baez. Nura, Nura. He's, He's on fire. fire. Baez. But, you know, Javi Baez, and I'll touch on another player. For, well, yes, yeah, she did. Just did with Hayward. Javier Baez is magic Baez. on shortstop. Magic with the glove. But when he's sitting the there batting, okay, I don't understand what he's swinging at. Okay? He seems like he's on a golf course. <coughs> Javier, what are you doing? Now, when he does make the contact... It's out of the par park, ballpark. You see that, yep. okay? Just, I mean, with that player, probably he needs the most batting practice from any other player, okay? But, you know, I, I'm actually very happy to see this team, 6-2, and two, okay, in the Cactus League, that the, in the division they're playing for. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen. It's early, but they were the same way last year, actually 2016 when they came out on fire too. They need to re refocus on that championship run they had because, you know what, one championship team to win at one, one championship with the, with the amount of money they're paying these players, you have to be almost of a dynasty. We're going to win the World Series. I get guaranteed. He yeah. is serious about the World Series. World Series, okay. baby. So let's, let, let's, move, do it. let's go on and show what Joe Madden has uh, as far as the rotation for uh, week one. Yep. This is what the rotation is going to look like. We got John Lester. Sawa. Huh? Okay. Uh, you got John Lester. You got Kyle Hendricks uh, going second. You Darvish. His name might be Diddy Awish. They just, they just changed it. <laughs> yeah. I it have a cousin very Diddy Awish. It could be very big. Great guy. You Darvish and Jose Quintana, which I want to touch base after this, with this uh, after the lineup. And Tyler Chatwood will be pitching uh, game five against the Reds. He came from the Mariners? Uh, Chatwood? Yeah, I think he came from I, I believe he, he's played for a couple of teams. Here's a t player I think will be, you mentioned yours, as a player I think is going to surprise a lot of uh, yeah. fans is, is Jose Quintana. I, I think, hope so. I think he, Jose Quintana that we're looking at right now is going to be your player I think who's going to surprise a lot of uh, fans, a lot of teams out there because, you know, he came from the Sox. With the Sox organization, he was one of the, one of the best. Jose Quintana... I believe, will be the player that is going to surprise a lot. Um, that's my opinion. You know, and he might even move up in, in the rotation. So we'll see. But hats off to the Cubs. Great, great uh, spring training. Yep, um, let's see what happens. I'm, I'm looking forward to it for, uh, for uh, week one when we start. Uh, what is it, March? Coming up soon. April. April 9th. April, yeah. Is the first, is, well, April 9th is the home opener for the Cubs. April 9th, Monday. It should be interesting. Yeah. It should be very interesting. It's going to be 65 degrees that day. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm just making that up. I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, probably, actually, probably 45. You know, the ivy is not going to be green yet. It's still going to be brown. Yeah. So, okay. 
On to the NCAA tournament, a little off, off the topic we usually talk about. Uh, the team I'm extremely excited for is the Loyola Ramblers, who actually made it to the tournament first time since 1985. Now, for you that follow college basketball, they haven't won a championship since 1963. This is actually a, a great um, feat for them because this is, not a, this is not a college admin that recruits the top players. This is not a college that the top players look for to make it, to go big, and to get drafted. You know, they're not your Dukes, they're not your Kansas, they're not your, your um, you know, they're not Kentucky. Pop, they're, not they're, they're, not pop, they're not Kentucky. Right. They're not your usual tournament makers, okay? So for them to make it this far with the players that they have, hats off to them, a great job. And, you know, they beat Illinois State to, to advance uh, 65-49. Congratulations and hope the best for you guys. So before we... Uh, Close the almost end this uh, topic with, with our segment. We're going to talk about the UFC. Um, the guy who is, who is a Syrian, like us, I'm very proud of him. Our community loves him, who, is, who represents us many times with our flag in a tournament of UFC, which is not easy to make. Um, he's always, you know, talking about his, his childhood, his, his heritage, is Benil Deryawish, okay? We're looking at one person who... I was surprised. You, you said Dariawish. Darius. You were thinking Dariawish from Darvish because I, I said Dariawish. Yeah. It looks like. It might because be I have way. a cousin Dariawish and he's like in his 60s and there's no way he's fighting. Well, no, obviously not. Dariawish. Dariawish. And there's always a Dariawish at the Chechana. Have you noticed that? Always. A always. Wait. Anytime you go, there's a Dariawish at the Chechana. Probably, but I'm, I, I highly doubt it. He smokes hookah. Benny, I don't think he smokes hookah. Anyway, so he, there was a, you know, he was coming up to a big fight. Yep. Um, which a lot of us were looking forward to. Look, Benio is a top 10, top 10 UFC fighter. Yep. And even his challenger, Alexander, said that. What happened uh, was unexpected, um, very heartbreaking defeat. And it happened within 40 seconds into the fight. It's sad to see that happen. I, I don't think as Benio, he's, a, he, Benio he's, he's an experienced fighter. I think there was just some miscommunication in the fight, where I believe, and many thought he was going for a tap uh, uh, on the on the uh, glove, where Alexander, his opponent, swung in and hit him, and it was hard to see that defeat. Um, when you train that long for months to to lose like that, in my opinion, I believe this was honestly, it was a fluke loss. It was unexpected, and you know what? Keep your head up. You're a great fighter. It happens to the, to the best of them. And I know you're a tiger. You're a lion at heart. You're better than that. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> you're better than that. We're so proud of you in our community. We're we so are. proud of you to sponsor us Assyrians. And <coughs> God be with you. And we will always support you. Always. And, you know, we're working on God willing to have him on our <coughs> show one day soon. And, and best of luck to you. And let's move forward with that. Keep your head up. Oh, and by the way, I challenged Benil to a doma eating contest. <laughs> and Benil, I'm still waiting to hear back from you, man. Did you really? Honestly? Oh, yeah. I you, challenged you said... him. And if you think you're going to beat me, buddy, you're wrong. <laughs> I will. Which, which doma? The grape leaves or the... What do you mean? Yeah, doma. I know, but there's certain types of doma. There's like the stuffed doma, the onions, or just the grape leaf ones. Just the, the grape leaves. Okay, you know what? I don't do the onion and the tomato. I'm not pepper. a fan of that either. I'm not a just fan the, of it. Not the zucchini. Just keep it the small, sweet, and the sour one yep, with I, some mesta. You know what? I might even challenge in that, too. I, might, I, I, I really challenge you, Benil. So <laughs> when you're ready, come see we me. We might have that. Actually, we might have that on After the Whistle, the dome eating contest. Who knows? We'll see how many viewers we'll get for that. Yeah. We'll, we'll close off the segment um, with uh, Edmund's got um, some special a uh, special topic, which we kind of discussed last week, which was the Chicago Bulls, April 3rd versus the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. Uh, this is a great, great game. Uh, our community did something wonderful with this by sponsoring um, us as the Syrians with the show, with the Chicago Bulls. Right. And, and So touch base and tell us a little bit about it. Right. Uh, Robert, the producer, has got the flyer. He's going to bring it to me in a second. I left it over there. But what this is is Assyrian Night with the Chicago Bulls. What that means to us, and as the Assyrian community, thank you, producer, uh, what that means to us, Assyrians, 
um, basically means that on Tuesday, April 3rd at 7 p.m., the Chicago Bulls are going to host the Assyrian community. How are they going to host us? Well, they're giving us 50% off on tickets. Okay. If you go to the Bulls website, you put in the promo code, you get 50% off. At the same time, during the game, have time and a couple of other times during the game, they're going to recognize the Assyrian community and the Assyrian New Year. As you know, our Assyrian New Year is April 1st, which is Chap Nisan. Mm -hmm. And we want to use this to have the community in Chicago and all eyes be on us so that we can all celebrate the Assyrian New Year together. And what better way than to have 23,000 screaming fans, all eyes on us, and everyone recognize us and the Assyrian community on our Assyrian New Year. So with this, the information is on my Facebook. It's on the Assyrian American National Federation's Facebook website. You can go there, click on the website, put in the promo code, purchase tickets. You'll be purchasing tickets directly from the Chicago Bulls. You get 50% off. If you want to sit up top, somewhere in the middle or down low, the price points anywhere from $23 all the way up to $75. The tickets are discounted. Bring, come with the family. Come with your relatives. Come with your neighbors, your coworkers whoever it may be. Bring your wife, bring your girlfriend. Heck, bring them both. Bring your wife and your girlfriend. <laughs> Have them both come to the game, put them in different sections, uh, and you probably get killed only for doing that. So yeah. I didn't, uh, tell us with this. So it's only through the uh, website? Can they call the Chicago Bulls? Uh, no. You're no, going okay. to have to purchase the tickets from the Bulls website. Okay. Uh, all the information that you see here is on my Facebook. It's on the ANF website, ANF. and a lot of other people shared it. Um, all I'm saying is, we can use the data from this game if we have a lot of our people purchase the tickets. Mm -hmm. So when we want to do a Syrian night with the Cubs, the Bears, the Blackhawks, whoever, we can show the data that, hey, our community came out and we purchased 700 tickets. So this way with the Bulls next year, I can kind of negotiate even a, a bigger discount than 50%. But right now... If you can get tickets to a Bulls game for 23 bucks, that's, that's ridiculously that's cheap. Exactly. Yeah, and to sit at the 100 level for $65? Absolutely. I mean, honestly, guys, it, you're not only going to a professional event. You know, you're going to see a lot of your own community, your own friends. I mean, that, that's something that's going to be fantastic. You know, bring your flags, your posters. And stuff. Do as much as you can to be recognized out there. And like Edmund mentioned, you know, if this, if this is successful, we'll go with the Chicago Cubs. And, and like it mentioned, or we'll go to the Blackhawks, and one of his favorite teams is Chicago White Sox. <laughs> we'll discuss that too. Right. But you know what? Let's make this an uh, every year event, and see what we know where we go from there. This is something uh, when I when I when I actually saw this, I was actually thrilled because you know this is something that we we don't see. You know we're we're trying to excel out there. We're trying to promote us. We never did anything like this, and this is something fantastic. Right. You know why not? Why not be recognized in a professional sport? And and I have a guarantee for all of you out there. The Bulls will win this game. Did you see that? Yeah. That's crazy. I have a <laughs> – stop making fun of me. I have a guarantee for this game. The Bulls will win 107 to 99. Also, don't forget, when the Bulls win at home and they score more than 100 points, you get a free Big Mac. And for those of you that are going to ask, well, where do you get the Big Mac from? You get it from McDonald's. Well, how about that? There okay. you go. 107 to 99, it's guaranteed the Bulls are going to win. Next time I have him on a show, I honestly should make you wear one of those um, crystal ball genie kind of guys. As I am. You know? So, honestly. If you need guidance on life, just ask me. <laughs> yep. Guys, Edmund Ectibo, I'm, I'm actually so thrilled to have him as my co-host. You know, you put on a great show. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for tuning in after the whistle. Thank you to my producers who do a great job. You know, hands off to them. Oh, Edmund, yes. I, I got to tell them my Burger King joke. Go ahead. What did Bruce Lee order from Burger King? Whoppa! <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> the young guy's laughing. That means oh! Bruce Lee is but yeah, Bruce Lee ordered a Whoppa! He ordered a Whoppa. Oh, you Burger know what? King. Before we actually close the segment, I do apologize. Uh, Matt Forte. Yes. You know what? Awesome job, buddy. More players that retire should be more like you. Retire with the team that you started off with. Great job. You know, your heart's in the right place. Other than that, good night, everybody. Thanks for watching After the Whistle. To my producers, Edmund Actibo, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next Monday. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we start real slow. You just put your lips together, and you come real close. Can you blow my whistle, baby, whistle, baby? Here we go. Stroke your little ego I bet you I'm guilty, your honor That's just how we live in my 